there are a set of action result types which returns a response with a specific status code. We have talked about different action result types like content result, JSON result and file result. All these action results are used to send a specific type of data in the response body. For example, we use JSON result to send JSON data in the response body. Now, sometimes we would not want to send any data in the response. For example, when the user has typed a URL for which no resource exists, at that time, we might not want to send any data in the response. At that time, we might want to send an error message saying that the page you are looking for is not found with a specific status code 404, which stands for not found. Another example would be, let's say when we are sending a request with some query string, let's say book ID and the book ID is expecting a value from 1 to 1000, but the user has passed book ID as let's say 1200. Then this value 1200 is not a valid value for book ID. In that case, we might want to return a response with the status code 400 bad request. So it is advisable to return a proper HTTP status code in the response to a client request. This helps the client to understand the request result and then take corrective measures to handle it. Proper use of the status codes will help to handle a request's response in an appropriate way. Out of the box, ASP.NET Co has built-in methods for the most common status codes. For example, when we want to send a status code 400 in the response, at that time we can use this action result, bad request result. In the same way, if we want to return a status code 400 in the response, we can use this action result, not found result. In the same way, if we want to return a status code 401 in the response, we have this action result class, unauthorized result. Now in ASP.NET Core, we don't have an action result for all types of status codes. In that case, we can use this status code result and we can send any status code in the response. All right, so we use this status code result in case when a built-in action result class is not available to send a proper status message to the client. So let's understand these status code results with an example. Let me go ahead and let me create a new controller. And we are going to create an empty MVC controller. Let's click on this add button. And let's call this controller maybe book controller. And inside this book controller, let's say we want to have an action method called books. Let's also specify the route for this action method. And let's say the route is going to be slash books. Now with this route, let's say user can also pass query strings. For example, when the user specified this route, with that, he can also specify query string like is logged and book ID. So the URL will look something like this slash books and then a query string like is logged equals maybe true and book id equals let's say 200 okay and here i will not call this action method as books i will call it book because from here we are going to return a single book now when the user makes a request for this action method at that time user has to provide the book id so that based on the book id we can return a book in the result so here first we are going to check if in the query string the user has specified a book id for that we can say request dot query and we know that this query is a dictionary in this dictionary we want to check if this dictionary contains a key called book id if the query string does not contains book id that means if the user has not specified this book ID query string in the URL, at that time, we want to set the status code to 400. For that, on the response object, we have status code property. We can set it to any status code. Here, we want to set it to 400. That means bad request. And then we want to return some content. For that, I'm using this content method. And here, let's say the content is going to be an error message. For example, book id is not provided so in this example we are setting the status code on the response explicitly and then we are specifying the response body using this content method but what we can also do is instead of returning this content result we can return an instance of 
bad request result and when we return an instance of bad request result at that time the status code will be automatically set to 400 that means bad request and here we are returning an instance of bad request result in short we can also use a method called bad request okay and behind the scenes this bad request is going to return an instance of bad request result okay another use case will be let's say the user has specified the book id but for the book id we are only expecting values from 1 to 1000 any value less than 1 is not accepted for book id and any value more than 1000 is not expected for the book id let's assume that in the database where we are storing our books there we have books only with book id 1 to book id 1000 we don't have any book id with 1001 or 1002 or any value greater than 1000 so in that case we will write another if statement and in that if statement we will check if the book id value is between 1 and 1000 so here again on the request object we will use query dictionary and from that dictionary we want to get the value of book id query string okay let me actually put it outside of this if statement so let me cut it from here and here let's go ahead and let's create a variable of type integer let's call it book id and let's pass the value which this query dictionary will return and we know that this query dictionary is going to return an object so what we are going to do is we are going to convert that object into integer type for that we will say convert dot to int 32 okay so it is going to return the value of book id as an object now we are converting it into the integer type and here we will check if book id if it is less than one or if it is greater than thousand in that case we want to return status code 404 that means not found so here we will say return and in order to return a 404 status code we have another status code result which is called as not found result okay so this not found result it is automatically going to set the status code of the response to 404 and in short we can also write it as not found so this not found is a method which behind the scenes is going to return an instance of not found result now here for the bad request this method we can also specify a response body for example let's say book id is not provided so in this case this bad request method it will return an instance of bad request object result but if we don't specify this response body in that case it will return an instance of bad request result so there are two types of bad request result one is bad request result and one is bad request object result when we specify the response body like this to this bad request in that case it is going to return an instance of bad request object result in the same way when we are not specifying any argument for this not found in that case it is going to return an instance of not found result as you can see here but if we specify a response body in that case it is going to return an instance of not found object result keep this point in mind and here let's specify the response message as book id is not in range of 1 to 1000 something like this then we also want to check if the user is logged in or not for that i'm going to write another if statement and here in the url we are also going to specify this is logged query string so if it is true that means the user is logged in but if it is false or if is logged is not specified in the query string that means the user is not logged in so here we are going to check the value of is logged query string so for that on the request object let's access this query dictionary and there let's specify the query string as is logged now this expression here it is going to return an object this is logged is going to contain a boolean value true or false so here let's go ahead and let's convert it to boolean value for that let's say convert dot to boolean and let's pass this expression to this to boolean method it will convert whatever value this expression will return into a boolean value even if the is logged is not specified in the query string 
that means it will be null and if is logged is specified but no value is passed for that is logged in that case it will be empty so by default that will be converted to false okay now inside this we want to check if that value is false that means if is logged is false that means the user is not logged in in that case we want to return a status code 401 in the response that means unauthorized for that we have another action result and that is unauthorized result okay so by default this unauthorized result will set the status code as 401 now when we are using this unauthorized result there we cannot specify any response body as you can see we have this error but we have another method called unauthorized object result okay and in that case we can specify a response body and in short we can write it as unauthorized which is a method like this so when we are passing the response body here as an argument in that case this unauthorized method is going to return an instance of unauthorized object result but if we don't specify any response body in that case it will return an instance of unauthorized result so for now let's specify the response body and let's say you are not logged in finally if all these checks are passed in that case we want to return a file content so here i'm going to use this file method and there let's specify the file path so here i'm going to specify the relative file path so inside this www root folder inside this sample folder we have the sample.pdf so i will specify the path of that pdf so it is in samples slash sample.pdf and let's also specify the content type as application slash pdf okay let's run this application okay and in the url let's say slash books so here in the url we are not specifying the book id if i press enter you see we have this message book id is not provided let me open the network tab let's make the request again and let's click on this request and here you see the status code is 400 that means bad request now let's say i specify the book id query string but i specify its value as 2000 now if you remember we are only going to expect values from 1 to 1000 for the book id if i press enter here we have this message book id is not in range of 1 to 1000 and if you notice the status code is 404 that means not found okay now let me go ahead and let me specify a book id in between 1 and 1000 maybe 500 and if i press enter we are not specifying the is logged query string so in that case we should get this message you are not logged in and if you see the status code is 401 that means unauthorized now let me go ahead and let me also specify the is logged query string so i will use this and and let's specify is logged query string and let's set it to true and now when i press enter the status code is 200 that means everything is okay and in the response you will see the file result and here keep in mind that since we are returning different action results based on different scenarios as you can see that's why we have set the return type for this action method as i action result then only we can return different types of action results from within an action method because if you remember from our previous lectures all the action results in asp.net co they are basically the child of this i action result interface all right now as per my knowledge asp.net code does not have inbuilt methods for all the http status codes sometimes you will need to return status code without such an inbuilt method status code without such a shortcut method can be returned through the status code method which accepts an integer as an input and you can pass the status code number in there for example here instead of returning this unauthorized action result we can also use status code result for that we can say return a new instance of status code result okay and there we can specify the status code number which we want to return for example i will specify 401 for unauthorized okay now we already have a method for that or you can say an action result for that but if there is any status code which you want to return in the response and for that if there is no action result 
in that case you can use this status code result and you can specify the status code there and in short we can also write it as status code method behind the scenes the status code method is going to return an instance of status code result and if you don't remember the actual status code which you want to return in that case asp.net co has a class named status codes having constant for all http status code for example here if you don't remember the status code for unauthorized what you can do is you can use microsoft.aspnetco.http.status codes and dot and there you will get all the status codes for example here we want to return status code 401 so if i scroll down here we have this status 401 unauthorized so in this way also you can return a status code okay basically this constant here it is going to return http status code 401 as you can see it is of type integer all right here in this lecture i just wanted to tell you that we also have action results for different status codes which we can use in order to return a given status code in the response usually we use these status codes when we are creating a web api but there might be some scenarios when we are creating an sp.net co mvc application there also we might want to return a status code in the response without any response body or with some error message in the response body at that time we can use these status code results in our application so this is all from this lecture if you have any questions then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day